Hey there, how's it going? Well, normally I really like David Pakman's stuff, and I actually recommend his channel. But in this video, I disagree with him, and I'm going to explain how and why. And it's increasingly clear that corporate media is not going to be actively criticizing or even uh, issuing a, a, a sort of serious critique of what Donald Trump plans to say, including lies. And what I mean by that is uh, we'll start with one example. In the example that David Pakman is going to give, he's going to show that he thinks that if there is something that's shown to not be true, it should be reported as a lie, even though lie has to, <laughs> in order for something to be a lie, there has to be the intent of lying. Otherwise, it's just stating something that isn't true. David doesn't seem to want people to differentiate between those things. And I mean, mainstream media certainly didn't do that when uh, they were critiquing Hillary in any way. On NBC's Meet the Press over the weekend, Wall Street Journal editor in chief Gerard Baker was asked about, will you call out Donald Trump's lies when Trump lies? And we know Trump lies like many politicians have never been able to do so before to, to quote George W. Bush. Uh, we don't always see the lies called what they are. Here's what Gerard Baker said. And I warn you, it's very, very disturbing. Do you feel comfortable saying so and so lied to be that depth that, you know, if somebody says just an outright falsehood, do you say the word lie? Is that important to start putting in reporting or not? You know, it's a good I, I'd be careful about using the word lie. Um, lie implies much more than just saying something that's false. It implies a deliberate intent to mislead. He's right. I may not like Trump, but this guy is right. Sorry. Um, I think it's perfectly when, Don, when Donald Trump says thousands of people were on the rooftops of New Jersey on 9-11 celebrating thousands of Muslims were there celebrating. I think it's I think it's right to investigate that claim, mm -hmm. to report what we found, which is that nobody found any evidence of that whatsoever. And to say that basically to state that it's false, that it is not a true thing. I, I don't I think I think it's then up to the reader to make up their own mind to say this is what Donald Trump says. This is what a reliable trustworthy news organization reports. And you know what? I don't think that's true. I think if you start ascribing um, a, uh, a moral intent, as it were, mm -hmm. to someone by saying that they've lied, I think you run the risk that you look like you are being, you're not being objective. And I think, and, and I do think also it applies, look, people, uh, this, is, this is happening all the time now. Right. People are looking at what Donald Trump's saying and say, this is false, it's a false claim. And I think people say, well, you know what? Hillary Clinton said a lot of things that were false. I don't recall the press being quite so quite so concerned about saying that she lied. So what Hillary Clinton has to do with this, I have no idea. We're now nearly two months past the election of Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton is nowhere to be found. No clue what she has to do with any of this. David, you and a whole shit ton of Democrats weren't concerned about the way media covers things when they were covering Hillary or the way they've covered Obama in the past eight years. But before Trump has even had a chance to do anything, we're supposed to call him a liar at every turn because Trump? Okay, I may not like Trump. I can't stand Trump. But I'm not going to suddenly demand media does something that we would have found unacceptable towards a candidate that we like. So Gerard Baker's making this into more of a semantic and definition thing, right? The word lie includes an intent. You know it's not true and you say it anyway, presumably to mislead or deceive versus you misstated a fact which could come from ignorance. You can't know the intent, so you can't call them lies, but will report inaccuracies. Yes, yes. Not bad, right? Well, no, not really. What Gerard Baker is suggesting is pussyfooting around. We have not found evidence that what Donald Trump alleges is true. Donald Trump's lies at our at, are at such a level that this is not going to cut it. And other media outlets have not hesitated to call them lies. If media is to be objective or as objective as possible, then you can't have completely different standards for people you like versus people that you don't like. Now, if you want to just do a vlog, a blog, 
something where you're just talking about how you feel about things, just like social commentary, then fine, fine, state that Trump was a liar. But if we're expecting media to come to better standards than they've been in the past, um, we can't just suddenly expect them to be worse than they ever were and become more partisan than they ever were. Um, that's just not the answer. The New York Times, MSNBC, uh, New York Magazine, The Washington Post. Oh, well, they don't matter because they're just liberal, serious media like The Wall Street Journal. After left tilting mainstream media covered the election so poorly and was so biased in the way that they covered the election, yeah, they're not going to get a better reputation by being exactly what people don't like about mainstream media which is, by the way, owned by News Corporation, which is the company that owns uh, Fox News as well. They are going to be better because we don't know what Donald Trump's intent is. When Donald Trump claims that the unemployment rate is really 42 percent. When people try to claim that one out of four women at colleges will be raped or people will attempt to rape them, do we call them liars or do we say that they are misinformed or do we say that uh, they have their facts wrong how do we respond to that if we just say well they're a liar well they may not be lying to the best of their knowledge that may be the statistic that they were shown they may have been shown it by a source that isn't valid or maybe a source that doesn't take a number of things into consideration. Trump giving statistics that are blatantly false may not be him lying. He may have been told this by people. He may believe some sort of bullshit from some sort of propaganda somewhere. But we can't objectively say that he's lying when he makes these statements. When it's 5%, we're going to say We've not been able to find evidence that the unemployment rate is 42 percent. People can say that that is blatantly false. You don't have to call someone a liar to say that something that they said is blatantly false. And, and let the public decide when Donald Trump claimed with no evidence that he could save three hundred billion dollars a year from the Medicare Medicare prescription drug program that only cost seventy eight billion. Uh, should 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 news outlets say We've not found evidence based on just knowing that 78 is a smaller number than 300, that this is actually possible. But viewers and readers should judge for themselves. That's hyperbole and you know it. OK, we need to call out when something is false. We need to just say, hey, that's false. OK, and we need to be vigilant about that. But we shouldn't resort to calling someone a liar when we don't have actual proof of intent. Sorry, David, but I disagree with you here.